Hi and welcome to Polly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. For today's tutorial we're going to make sweet little bowls completely from polymer clay. We're going to do a nice easy cane and I'll show you how to do that cane to start with and then we're going to use the cane in a hexagon shape and build up into a round bowl. This is the one I'm going to do but obviously I'll show you this one, the colour options at the end and tell you the colours I used for this one. Today's tutorial is a standalone tutorial, but it's also an aid for those of you who've bought the Etsy tutorial from me on making bowls like this one. Um, and as I mentioned in that, in some cases it's easier to see a video of some of the techniques I use than it is just for the still photos. So I'll reference areas of this tutorial where it's good just to watch some of the techniques I do. Now, as you can see, this one is far more complex than the nice simple bowl, but I wanted to do this as a standalone so that you don't have to buy anything. You know me, I'm not up for the hard sell, so this one is a completely free tutorial. So moving on to the bowls themselves, there's one thing I just need to chat about quickly before we get into the full tutorial, and that's about how we get the nice shapes and how we get the precision for all these lines on the back. Now, I was very lucky, and I got for Christmas some of these staggered shape stencil sets. That's quite difficult to say. Um, but anyway, since I got them, I've just loved using them. I've been making polymer clay bowls of various shapes and sizes and designs for many years. But as soon as I saw these, my first thoughts was, wow, I can really have some fun with bowls. Obviously, particularly because they've got the nice large round shapes. I hadn't got any cutter shapes quite this size. But with the hexagons, of course, if you know my work and follow me on Facebook or Instagram, you'll see I often post hexagonal shapes where I've cut my little triangle slices of canes and built them up into hexagons. Now these shape sets are from PC UK Tools and once I got them I had to go back and see what other sets they did and so I have ended up buying myself the complete range of all the shapes because I know they're going to come in handy. They are made of acrylic, they're about three millimetres in thickness and as you see when we use them you can cut both on the inside and on the outside. And they are very, very useful for what we're doing today. As you see throughout the tutorial, I use them a lot. However, I'm very aware that this is a free YouTube tutorial. And you know me by now, if there is a free alternative, I will also give you that to do. Because I'd far rather, particularly if it's the first time you're doing something, you use something that you've got easily to hand around the house rather than going and buying something. But if you do want to make quite a few of these bowls, or if you have got the Etsy tutorial, then I can't recommend these enough. They are really fantastic. But, as I say, if you want the freebie alternative, I have put in the video description below links to where you can download freely online decreasing sizes in hexagons and circles. Now, they won't be quite the same size and thickness um, as the ones that you get from PC UK Tools, but they are very usable. I've cut mine out just from thin card, so they're nice and easy to use, and when I've done this, I print two sheets off, and on each one I cut the alternate rings out so that you've got one sort of layer to use as like a, a cutting space so you get nice nice neat edges and from the card ones we'll literally be looking at the angles and the shapes and also it's quite useful for the thickness depending on your printer or what size you uh, make them yours may differ obviously in the size that I'm using in the tutorial but as, as I say for a free alternative these are good the equipment we need for today is fairly straightforward apart from the stencils or template shapes that I've already mentioned. I work on a big tile, so I've got a big one under here. Uh, anything which is nice and flat and non-porous will work well. I use a polymer clay blade. I often refer to these as tissue blades. A little craft knife. A small cable needle, say a blunt-ended knitting needle. This one's about four millimeters, doesn't matter on the size, but I, on the size, but I use this just to join over any seams or gaps in the polymer clay slices. Cocktail stick always comes in handy. There's one point where I create marks on the stencils and it's actually easier to do with a cocktail stick than with the cable needle. A roller is very handy and when I'm neatening the bowl then I use a brayer roller which is much easier to use. So if you've got one of these, fantastic. We're going to burnish the bowl to get it nice and smooth. So this is a stainless steel soap and I use this as a burnishing tool. If you don't have one of these, then you can just use the side of your roller instead. When we're straightening the sides, it's easier to use something small and straight. So I will use the blunt end of an old tissue blade. This one went blunt a long time ago. You can sharpen them, but this one I didn't and I've simply masked it 
make sure my hands don't get anywhere near the sharp blade and then it's good to use to press up against the sides to neaten the shapes as we go. When we're cutting long thin strips of polymer clay then having something like a metal ruler is fantastic. This was a metal ruler but over the years with wet wipes cleaning it all from the polymer clay all the numbers which used to be on this side have disappeared but it makes a great tool. Also again good for straightening up the sides of pieces if you want to have something to do that with. I'll come on to the bowl in a moment because the bowl shapes are important. I'll be using several sheets of paper to work on. Now these are the size that will take the piece of clay that we're going to use, the slab of clay as I start referring it to, which is the size of our bowl mould. And I'll, you'll need about four of these. This is wax paper. It doesn't matter whether you use wax paper, baking paper, um, tracing paper, anything that's sort of see-through um, is good. You could also use um, a laminated sheet if it was a clear laminated sheet. So just put the laminated sheets through the laminator by themselves and they make good pieces to work on as well. We use a pencil at one point to mark on the paper. I will be using the measuring sheet both to work on and to use as a measure and this one is freely downloadable from www.printablepaper.net When I'm baking I will bake on an additional tile that's the right size to sit my bowl on and I will tent the whole piece in aluminium foil making sure the foil doesn't touch the bowl so it's not pressing into the um, uncured clay and tents right over the top just protect the clay should the oven spike in temperature during the baking process. I use a pasta machine dedicated to polymer clay use and I will also use biodegradable wet wipes and tissues to clean and wipe my hands and my work surface as I go along. You want a bowl that you can use either sort of go halfway up the side of or just a small one but it needs to be either completely smooth on the inside or completely smooth on the outside and it's up to you whether you decide to put it on the inside or the outside. I personally find putting it on the outside is better because you get more chance of not trapping any air on the underside. I also like going on the outside rather than the inside because I find when you go on the inside it obviously makes it smaller than the shape and whilst you might have a nice shape of something that you like at the moment when it goes smaller I'm not quite so keen on it. You do want to avoid, avoid something that has obviously an inset on the underneath and I do show you in the Etsy tutorial how to get around this. Um, so for something like this bowl I would automatically go on the inside for this tutorial rather than the outside. This is the bowl I'm going to use. This one is a stainless steel bowl that I bought from Ikea. Sadly, I don't believe they're selling them anymore, but I think they are doing a glass version instead. And as long as it's flat on the bottom again, that would be absolutely fine. When they come from Ikea, there's printed writing on the bottom, so I do make sure I sand that off first before I use it, otherwise that transfers on the inside of the bowl. The other reason I like these is they've got a nice bit of flat on the bottom, so you can actually press down to give yourself a nice flat base. But have a look around the house. Most people have round bowls in one shape or another that can go into the oven. Obviously, that's the important part. Must be able to go in the oven and bake at the temperature we use. And the other thing is it needs to be sides that slope away from the bottom so that the bowl can be popped off nice and neatly. You don't want something that's then going to go inside which goes smaller because you won't be able to remove the clay and this bowl we are making is completely made of clay. So I think we've covered all the equipment we need so let's move on to the clay. The first sort of clay we need before I go on to the coloured clay we're going to use is some scrap clay. So this is leftover bits and pieces from the old ends of canes that I've had and goes into the scrap pile. And it's the sort of thing that when you've got the leftover distorted ends, when you mix them all up, they quite often come out into a grey or a brownie sort of colour. The amount we need is probably about two ounces or 56 grams worth. That'll be more than enough you need for today's bowl. And the scrap clay, the same as the ordinary clay, needs to be well conditioned. For today's project I'm using Fimo Soft, but all well-known brands of polymer clay will work equally well for this technique. We're going to make a cane using a couple of very small Skinner blends and then outlining them in a colour, and this is much more than you need. Um, I only use about half of this when I'm making the cane itself, but it's useful to have a little extra, as we'll come on to later, for extra bits to do the bowl decoration. So for the Skinner blend, I'm using lavender, raspberry and plum for one blend, white, peppermint and brilliant blue for the other and in each of these we've got quarter an ounce or seven grams. We're then going to do a border and I'm going to sandwich some pink between black 
and for that we've got half an ounce or 14 grams of each. For the back underneath colour of the bowl I've chosen to do the peppermint and the brilliant blue. For the brilliant blue we don't need very much, I've just done 7 grams. For the peppermint we need a lot more, obviously that's 7 grams, quarter of an ounce. For the peppermint it's 3 quarters of an ounce and about 21 grams. And as I say for the black, for the extra bit, I've actually got a whole ounce here or um, 28 grams, but that is more than you're going to need. What I would recommend is to make the cane first and don't choose these colours until after you've made the cane and put it together because that's the point at which I will then choose what colour I'm going to do the border for and what additional colours I'm going to add on the outside of the bowl. I've only put them here because I've already made the bowl so I already know what colours I'm going to use so I can put them down for you. First thing to do is to get all the clay conditioned in these individual amounts and individual colours. If you're not unsure how to condition polymer clay, I do have a video with a few tips and techniques on that and I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. I will get all of the clay conditioned and put it through on setting number 3 of my pasta machine, which is medium setting, and on my pasta machine, naught is thick and 9 is thin. So I'll bring you back when we've got those done and we'll start with the Skinner Blends with these two. Having thoroughly conditioned all of our colours, and I've used setting number three on my pasta machine where naught is thick and nine is thin, I've got the white, the peppermint and the brilliant blue, and we're going to do a Skinner blend with these three colours. So the end ones we cut down through diagonally, and the middle one we cut down straight. If you're unused to doing Skinner blends or not sure how to get nice neat ones, I do have a video tutorial with a few tips and techniques which may be of use. So all I've done is I've just put the two layers together because obviously we've got two layers of each colour and we have the broad end of the triangle up this end for the white and up this end for the blue. Give a little roll over and I'm going to fold it in half, pinch where the fold is and I'll put it through the pasta machine one setting thicker because we now have four layers of clay here. As normal with a Skinner blend, put it through the machine, collect it in your hand, fold top to bottom, making sure that the white is always at one side and the blue at the other. And I'll put that through, continue that until I have a nice blend from one side through to the other. We've got our blend nicely from the white through to the blue, so I'm simply going to chop this into two, lay the two pieces on top of each other, pinch at one end and put it back through pinch end first through the pass machine to get a longer thinner piece on the same setting. Having got our longer strip I now want to get the longest thinnest strip that we can so on my pasta machine I will go straight down to the thinnest setting number nine and put the dark end through first. If you know that your machine tears or rips your clay then simply move down one setting at a time till you get your thinnest usable setting. I also always turn the handle a couple of times when I change settings like I do from a thick setting to a thin setting just so that any clay that's collected in between the rollers just moves out of the way before, your pit, before you put your piece through and always dark end first. So we're going to create a nice block of our Skinner blend but this is going to be where you've got sort of points on either end so if you want to you don't have to ignore the adjust it later on but if you want to start by doing a really thin little concertina at this one end as you work your way down so it can get wider and then when we get to the other end we can just make it narrow again as I say if this proves difficult or you're not really sure what I'm talking about just don't do it just create a nice flat um, block of blend and we can adjust it later but now I'm getting towards this end having gone wider in the middle here I'm just going to start tapering this narrow again like me yours may be uneven in which case just press it flat down on the work surface top and bottom to even it out and now with our thin piece I'm going to as I say start making it more diamond in shape. This needs to be quite a long thin diamond so I'm going to concentrate on either end first pinching them out nice and thin 
And we want to keep this one about as even as we can from one side through to the other because we are going to be kaleidoscoping this cane. So if possible, we want it relatively neat. Size-wise, we're looking for something about two inches, five centimetres um, wide that way and about one and a half inches in height. So just adjust it slightly. Get it so that you're pretty happy that it's even. And when it's roughly the right size and height, put that to one side and repeat exactly the same with our next three colours. So for this one I've taken the lavender, the raspberry and the plum and same thing, diagonally down the end ones, straight down the middle, put all the pieces together and get the blend and end up with your shape the same as this. And I'll come back when I've got them both done. Once you have both pieces done, take half of your black, so half an ounce, 14 grams, condition it thoroughly and put it through on a thin setting of your pasta machine. So setting number seven on my machine and create yourself a nice sheet of black. We want to cover just one side of these shapes. So with my tissue plate, I'm going to cut down either side take away the excess and then I'm going to chop one end neatly because they're curved it's difficult to put the exact length on them so it's easier to pick the clay up and simply add it carefully making sure we've got no trapped air to the underside of the clay chop off any excess repeat for the other one And now with them standing upwards, so you've got the black towards you, we are going to take a triangular chunk out of each of these. We'll do it by holding our blade quite um, close towards the one end and keeping it nice and straight and upright. Chop straight down. Chop straight down and remove a little triangular piece. Repeat for the second one. They don't, don't have to be a particular size, but if possible, keep them relatively neat. Take all your offcuts of black and roll them up into a ball and then a sausage. Just taking a little bit off one end, we're going to create a tiny little triangle that's going to sit inside this groove. So not the whole, um, not the whole size of the groove, just sit right in the centre. So I've just rolled it into a small piece and I'm just pressing it into a triangular shape with my fingers. Neaten off the bottom end and then you can pick that up, put it in and cut off the excess. We're now going to gently persuade that to start to close up. If you can get it so that the black starts to close in to that little triangular piece, that's perfect. If not, don't worry. But you can see now we've got a slight curve on this piece. This piece sits black end towards the middle into that groove there. And having got him in place, very gently curve the white or the lighter side down so it sits around the outside of our second one. So we're creating like a sort of a, a swirl round shape. With your black clay, put it back into a ball Roll it to a sausage that's twice the length of your cane, so for me that'll be three inches or seven and a half centimetres. And when you've got it that shape, I'm just pressing down again, just using the points that my fingers create when I put them together to create more of a triangular shape. I keep my end on the I keep my finger on the other end so that it doesn't spread out too much. You can rotate if you want to. Come on, trying to keep it relatively the same width the whole way down the length. Chop in half and half just pops in there between those two blends. If you need to, you can pull it slightly outwards with your thumbs so it fits nicely in between the gap. 
and then the second triangle is going to sit in there. Our blue will sit so that the black end is inwards, just in there in between those two, and the pink sits with the black end outwards, pressed in next to the blue. Now we're going to create a sort of triangular cane, so this is our top point. So this can curl over just slightly to create our second point, and this one can curl in till it joins up and sort of curls back on the black underneath it to create our third point of a triangle. And now turn it on its side, making sure your fingers are clean, we're going to force this into a triangular shape. As I said, we know we want the white bit to be top point, so I'm just going to press that into a point and then press down the sides. By doing that, you've created a nice point on that side and then, of course, on that side. All I'm going to do now is reduce this cane in the triangular format by pressing in along the sides. And as you press in, so you sort of gently pull it longer. And I will continue to do that until it gets to about one inch or two and a half centimetres across each of these sides. got it to roughly the size I want upon each side, I'm going to chop it in half. I'm going to put half to one side to use to decorate the underneath of the bowl and then half we'll use to decorate the top. It also gives us our first chance to see what sort of pattern we're going to get. So one part to one side and I'm now going to reduce this cane down till it's about three quarters of an inch or about two centimetres in width. I'm not going to take off the distorted end because obviously when we reduce the cane we get some distortion on the end because doing it this way I will always know that this is the correct end to take the slices from and also depending on how many slices we need if you leave the distorted end you can sometimes squeeze a couple more slices out than you would if you take it off at this stage so I will continue to do that until I've got it to that size that I want and I'm going to get it as neat as I possibly can so that each side is exactly the same and then it will make a nice hexagon veneer in the centre of our bowl. Having got my cane to the right size, I'm just going to flat on, neaten off one end give myself a nice flat surface to start with. And we're going to put this to one side whilst we get the scrap clay layer ready for our bowl. One of the great things about having these staggered shape stencils is that I'm aiming for something around this sort of size, something between one or other of these, but having all the different sizes means that we can decide what finished size we need our bowl to be once we've um, completed the slab of clay with a decorated pattern. So the first thing I need to do is to create myself a piece of scrap clay, certainly big enough I'm going to go for around the um, larger of these two circles, so that if I want room to add extra pattern when we're making the bowl, I can. So I'll take probably about two ounces, um, one small packet, 56 grams of scrap clay, and I'm going to put it through the pasta machine and recondition it and put it through on a setting number three, so a medium setting, and hopefully I'll have enough to go around the larger size of these two rounds. Once your sheet started to get to the right size, but it's not quite wide enough, when you fold it in half and put it back through the pasta machine, you can just pull it slightly wider and do that as many times as you need in order to get a piece wide enough to take your larger template. Having got my sheet to the right size, I've got some wax paper to go underneath and I will put it down and then roll it into place to make sure there's no air bubbles trapped. Now we've got our sheet ready to go. One other thing that's very handy to do with these templates is to get a hexagon that fits just inside your circle. So 
put it nicely so that it's neatly inside your circle and then going straight down at each point just mark points of the hexagon. Remove all your templates, get a ruler and then we're just going to score very gently using the blunt side of our craft knife lines across the clay and this will give us guidelines when we're adding our hexagon pieces. As I say this, this has been such a game changer using these stencils because it makes life so much easier. Okay, so there we have our slab of clay ready to go with our hexagon line marked in the middle. I think you can see that quite clearly. And now when we cut our slices and start building up our hexagons, we can clearly see where they need to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is to cut 24 slices. I'm going to start with 6 in the middle and then 18 to go around the outside. And we'll see how we do with sizes and we can put our templates back on and work out whether or not we've got the right size. As I've said before in videos, when you're cutting slices, there's no such thing as the wrong or right width of each slice you take. It's simply a matter of what you can cut consistently, because we do want, if possible, get all these slices to be the same thickness. When I cut, I normally cut from the back towards me, but I also normally stick my head right over the top, which of course isn't very good when you're filming. So again, I know people who cut from the front to the back, I know people who do it sideways, Try all the different types. If you're having problems cutting straight slices, it may be that one will work better for you than others. For now, I'm just going to do a couple at the side here so I can see what I'm doing, and then I'll pull this away and cut the rest of my 24 slices so that I get them nice and even. And I'll bring you back when we're ready to start putting these onto our slab. I have all my slices cut here ready to go and I'll start by taking three. And the first thing to decide is which colour you want to go towards the middle. So I'm going to put the lightest one. So I'm going to put the two pieces together in my hand. Join the third piece up. Straighten up the edges of the line with the side of my blade and then we will put this in place and we should be able to do it in such a way that the corner lines line up. So I can see here for instance that one doesn't quite line up. So I know I can adjust that and that when it does line up we're going to have ourselves a nice neat hexagon. So I'll get the next three pieces in place. And I use quite a lot, an old polymer clay blade which has gone quite blunt and I've masked off one side because that's very handy to then use as a straightening tool with no chance of cutting your fingers on the sharp bit. I'm just going to use that just to neaten them up. And then I find it easier when I'm making things like bowls to neaten up as I go along. So I'm just going to roll any seams closed using this part, so it's not the actual end, it's just this little bit of the cable needle. And then we can start adding our next pieces. So the next one, I will begin by matching up that piece. So I now know that going around the outside, that piece needs to go on that way. And this piece needs to go that way. I do show you a different way of adding these pieces on in the tutorial where I do the more complex bowls. But for these small ones, this method works well. And you can see there that I can check that I'm going out in the right direction with these lines and if I wasn't 
I could use my masked blade just to sort of push them into line. So I'll carry on adding the row as we go around and see the pattern develop. Once all your pieces are in place, again we've had another layer, so I'm just going to go around and neaten any joins. You can always give it a little bit of a roll over as well. I always roll from the outside towards the middle though at this stage, so we want to keep that nice and a pristine hexagon shape. And then it's a question of seeing how much room we've got. Have we got room to add another layer around the outside? If you've got a little off cut, this is one where the corner broke off. Um, so I'm gonna put that on there. And the answer is that yes, we have. We've got plenty of room to do an extra line all the way around the outside and also to add a border and then to do our outer color. Unless, of course, you want to use the inner ring, in which case we wouldn't have room to put that and a border and some outside colour cane. So decide what you want to do and how you want your bowl design to be. So uh, as we've got room, I am going to do another layer. So that means another 30 slices of cane to add in around the outside. So I'll cut myself another 30. Start adding them in, but I will fast forward. And this time when we add our canes, we'll be adding one two, three to each side and I'll do that all the way around and once we've got those sides in place then we'll have an extra two triangles to add in each corner to create our hexagon. But as I say I will fast forward through that because you already know what we're doing by now. Having got all your pieces in place, look and check with the lines and I can see that over here I'm quite out but the rest of them look as though they're okay. So the first thing I'm going to do as before is just neaten down any of the joins. Take side of a ruler, a masked blade and just push down until you get these corners into the right places. So for instance, where this one's so far off, I can actually press him in quite well. And neaten up and flatten all your edges. So we now know we've got completely straight sides and that we can add ourselves a border around the outside and then a tiny little bit of extra pattern and the front of our bowl will be complete. To create a simple border, I've chosen to use half an ounce or 14 grams of the raspberry and the same amount of the black. Condition them both thoroughly. I'm going to put the raspberry through on the thickest setting of my pasta machine and get myself and then cut myself out a nice even rectangle. And I want the black to be able to go over that twice. So for me, I've gone down to setting number five on the pasta machine for my black. So when you've got your colours done, neaten off to give yourself a nice even rectangle of the pink 
obviously you can choose whatever colour you want, I just decided. I think I'm going to go for the blue around the very outside, so therefore I thought pink would be a nice contrast. Place it down on top of the black. I don't think I'll quite have enough to do it in one, so I'll do it in two lots. Chop around the outside. Remove the excess black. Lift it up off your sheet, making sure that the blacks are stuck to the bottom of the pink. Then I'm going to put the black back through the pasta machine till I get a sheet that's going to cover the top. And then I'm going to put a black layer on the other side. Any air pockets can just be rubbed out towards the sides. I need my border cane to be long enough to go around the outside of my hexagon, which at the moment it is. If it wasn't long enough, then I could put it back through the pasta machine on the thickest setting that way in, and it would of course stretch it to make it longer. Because mine is already long enough, I'm going to very gently just slightly pinch in one end along the line wide side. I can then put it through that way back on the thickest setting it'll give me a nice even border and quite a lot of depth so we've got enough to do quite a lot of border decoration. I want a nice straight edge so I'm going to put the border on and I'm going to use just the top corner of my blade and keep my fingers well out of the way. Your blade wants to be nice and upright against the ruler so you get a nice edge. We then want to take six slices the same width to fit around our hexagon. With your slices cut, simply take one at a time and place them up next to the outer edge of your hexagon veneer and using those score lines as a guide, simply chop off the piece neat. Repeat all the way around the border. When all six sides are done, either with a ruler or with the side of your stencil shape or with your blade nicely masked, just press that in. You can put your template back on and you can decide whether or not you want a small amount of colour to go so it's going to go just around the outside which I think I probably will do or whether you wanted a larger amount of colour in which case you'd cut around the outside of this one. I'm going to choose the peppermint colour to be my border one so I'm going to take half an ounce or 14 grams of that colour, condition it thoroughly. Having conditioned the clay I've just cut a piece off and I've put this through on setting number three and putting it up against the side I can see it's a fraction too high for the sides of my border. So I've done another piece, put it through on setting number four, trying that piece. That's about perfect. So I now know that I need setting number four for my outer border. I've decided I'm going to go just on the outside of this. So I've just got a small amount of the blue showing around the outside. So using the measuring sheet, I can see that for me, going from that darker line here, my pieces need to be one, two, two and a half of those squares wide and as long as the outer bit going towards each side for each piece and then I can add the six pieces around the outside. So I'm going to put my clay down to setting number four, get it to a size that will fit going diagonally away from that border and then cut myself six slices. Obviously if you find you need thicker slices and you haven't got enough clay, just add more clay in and condition that. But then one at a time, carefully add them up against the outer edge of your border and using your score marks, just chop off. If you've covered over a score mark, then you can generally follow the line of your cane slices. And just work your way slowly round.
Where the border cane comes up to our outside colour, I will just very gently roll over that. And where each piece joins, I will roll, but not very far over, because I'm going to cut just outside, so I don't need very much roll, and I don't want this excess blue to stick to the clay underneath, because we want to remove that in a minute, so we can use it elsewhere. Um, but other than that, just gently go down and neaten round the whole piece. So as I mentioned, I want to remove some of the outer clay that I'm not going to want. So I'm going to put that piece on there, slot the, making sure it's clean, slot the one on the inside and I can pull that one off I'm going quite a lot wider because I don't want to go too neat at the moment because we need to do some burnishing to get our whole pattern go nice. I'm just going to take off the excess out the outside. And this should pull off fairly easily still from the scrap clay behind and will be usable for later on in our design on the back or anywhere else where you might need it. So now we're going to really neaten off this front. And to do that, I've got an extra sheet of the wax paper. I'm going to press it on, making sure there's no creases anywhere and no air bubbles. And then with your burnishing tool, and I'm going to use a stainless steel soap, you could always use the side of your roller if you wanted to, but I find that these work very well. We're going to neaten off the whole of the um, pattern and make sure it's nice and smooth and level before we add it to our bowl. So I generally start in the middle, nice little circular motions, and work my way around, paying particular attention to the seams. And now I can go in slightly bigger circles, making sure all those seams are nicely joined and it's nice and level and there's no gaps. And I'll also just go back over those joins we did in the outer bit of the colour and go over the outer sides because again you don't want any air trapped between this layer and the scrap layer under release. So you can always go in an outward motion if you feel any bubbles to make sure it goes out where the coloured clay joins the scrap clay. I'll finish off finally with a roller, or in this case I'm using the Brayer roller. And you can see now why we added the extra margin around the outside, because where it's at the very edges, the tendency is for it to roll slightly flatter where it meets the clay. Because we've been working right to the edges. So, when you're happy, remove the wax paper and now we can use our templates to cut out our perfect circle. So whether you're using card or the acrylic stencils, find one that's the right size to be able to see nice and clearly and centrally where your pattern is. So what I'm looking at here is the amount of blue that's showing past the outside of each point. It's quite often useful to turn your piece the other way up because sometimes just looking at it at a slightly different angle you do get a different perspective. When you're cutting down obviously there's two ways we can do it. You can cut around the outside of your shape or the inside of the shape. If you're cutting around the inside then rather than just going straight down with your craft knife, if you go straight down through a thick layer of clay like this which we've got a stencil up against, the clay will actually effectively bulge out slightly so if you're doing on the inside, start just with the tip of your craft knife, slightly in, and then dig further in as you go around, particularly in a circle. By the time you get round to meeting this end again, you will then cut through the layers that you haven't quite cut through and you'll get a nice smooth line. It is, however, easier to cut on the outside. So what I'm going to do is, having got that one nicely placed, I can centre our other one inside it, and I now know if I keep that in place and lift this one off, that is now centrally positioned round our pa round the pattern. And all I need to do is very gently with my craft knife, and I am doing the same even on the outside. So I started with the point and I'm going to turn the paper, not my hand. 
and go all the way around. When you cut through, just remove all the excess clay. If the acrylic shape sticks at all, just very gently with your finger, press down and then you can just pull the piece away. We are going to add another pristine um, piece of wax paper on the bottom here because we're about to turn this over and decorate the un underside. So as always, press that down carefully so you haven't got any creases. And we're going to mark with a pencil the six areas so relatively roughly. The reason being that once we've turned this slab over, we've got no idea which direction is which on a round piece. But having done that, we can turn our piece over, take the wrapping, take the wax paper off the underneath, and going back and finding a hexagon template, we can point this. so that all the points face in the direction of our pencil line and repeat what we did on the front, doing our little points, marks in the corner of each angle. And we can now go back and draw in our score lines so we know where to put our design. On the back, we're going to do a hexagonal border using our triangular cane slices. So we need a plain colour in the middle and then we'll have a plain colour border around the outside and the hexagon border will be bordered on either side by the pink. So choose what colours you want to do. I think for the inside I'll go for a dark blue, then we'll do our border and then we'll have the light blue the peppermint around the outside again. Every piece, every layer I add on is going to be that same thickness as we've used before. So setting number four equivalent on my pasta machine and I'll make sure I cut the slices the same as I did on the front of the piece. So take sufficient of the brilliant blue clay to give you your hexagon in the middle. I'm going to see, because I've got quite a thin setting, whether I can do it out of just seven grams of clay. Um, you might need more if your setting is thicker. So let's get this conditioned and see if we've got sufficient to get ourselves a nice small hexagon. When you're doing your sizings, slightly wider is fine. Not quite wide enough is fine. If you can see there that this inner one haven't quite got the size to take two slices. And also think about how far out your piece is going to go. So if I do my border here, it's going to go quite a long way around the outside. If you do your border there, You've got quite a lot of the outer colour to look and if your bowl's quite um, rounded or quite domed you may not see so much of this on the under edge when the bowl sat on the surface. So I'm going to go for the outer one. So I need my blue clay to be the size of this outer size of this hexagon. And I just about scraped in with that seven grams. So depending on the thickness of your slices you might well want to do um, more clay. So I'm just going to chop off very quickly and easily around the side of the template. Remove the excess clay, lift the hexagon up and let's put it in place on our piece. Now we know when we've got it centrally because it'll fit on all six points. So that's pretty central. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, as we did before, more of our borders. And for this one, like me, you may well find that one slice does two sides. So I'm only going to cut three and see if I can get them to fit down either side. So I've got the second half of the cane that we'd put to one side earlier, reduced it down to the right size and cut myself off several pieces. I've actually cut off 30 because I'm pretty certain I'm going to need five around each side, um, but we can check that. So I'm going to put my five slices out to see whether they match. So put your first one down. We're not going to neaten these here. We're going to neaten them on the um, 
laminate sheet. I'm literally just putting this down just for sizing to see how we go. So that one would be in the middle there. This one would be along the bottom there, which means that that one would be up there. And yes, it will be five along one side. You should find however many you've got um, along the inside, you need one in between each of those and an extra one on the end. So for instance, if we had three along the side, we'd have three, four, five, six, seven. So having got our pieces there and knowing which order they're going to go down, I'm going to carefully transfer them in that order onto my measuring sheet. And I'm going to put them so they do make a flat edge. I've got the narrow pit there that's going to sit near the inside there and the outer edge which sits against that side there. And then it's the sim normal case of just joining them up. But it's much easier to get them neat and to manoeuvre them when they're on a laminate sheet than it is on scrap clay. Having got them joined, I'm going to make sure they're nice and neat. And you can use your finger gently, so I'm not pressing hard, I'm not digging into clay, I'm just persuading it to go backwards to get a nice, neat edge. Both sides. And gently remove the piece from the sheet. And put it up to your side. Now you will often find, as I have here, that manipulating it has made it slightly wider. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift up that side and put it properly in place. Lift up this side and put it in place using those score lines. And then you can normally find that you can just press gently in and that piece will straighten down. And then, as we've done before, just straighten up the edge with your cable needle, you can just bring any gaps in towards the border and your piece is nicely situated. So for the next piece, take your first one and match it up. So that's going to sit that way. So holding it in your hand, you now know that to do your straight line, that's going that way up and then just Work down the line. So our next five pieces are in place and you now know you can neaten these off in exactly the same way as we did and they will match up with this end of the piece here. Where you've joined the sides together, you can now bring any joints and jo close any seams and gaps and then repeat in exactly the same way. So this time the pattern's going to be that way up and just repeat going all the way around your border. I've cut another six slices from our border cane. Same thickness as before, so ones that match the thickness of everything we've been doing and just as before put them in place and cut off the corners and just work your way around adding those strips in. And use your cable needle down the edges to neaten up and make sure that these border lines are joined with our patterned border. Having got all the sides neatened, I just need to see how wide again I need these outer borders to be and in actual fact it's about the same size as we had on the front, so about two and a half of those centimetres, two and a half of those squares. So I'm going to take another seven grams of the peppermint because I know I'm going to put that down to setting number four on my pasta machine and I've also got all the leftover bits, the excess we cut off from the front. So condition all those together, put them on four, I'm going to make the sheet wide enough to go to the outer points of my piece 
and deep enough for what I want. The other thing I'm going to do is with the template that effectively fits around the outside, I'm going to very gently press in, so I'm just doing this just for an edge, so that I can get that to sit back into place around my clay, because it gives me an extra margin to work on neatly whilst I'm adding these final bits of clay. But because we've been working on the piece, it needs a little bit just to push it down. The other thing is, if you're lucky like I am, with the thickness we've been working at, the thickness of the clay is actually exactly the same height as the template, which means when we put this blue around the outside, it'll give us a nice working area, and we can then press down and get the whole of this side nice and flat, and have this hard border area to work on as we do so. So I've cut one strip just to double check that I've got the right length to go across the diagonal lines and the right depth to go well over the side of this. And I can now cut my other five strips to the same size. So as before, put the piece in place. Cut off diagonally. Add in the next strip. Having got all pieces in place, we can now go back and as before, just with the edge of the cable needle, just make sure that all the seams are joined together. Wherever you've got the joints in the blue, just give those a roll over as well to make sure they're nicely joined. And then once we've done all that, we'll get the wax paper on top and as before, burnish all the way over. When you're completely happy that the bottom side is nice and flat, you can turn over, remove the wax paper, and at this point, because we've got the template nicely in place, I am going to cut round the inside of it. So we're going to do, as I mentioned earlier, just put the tip of the craft knife in, and then let it go deeper as we go further down. And I'm pushing up against the outer edge of the stencil. Obviously if you're using the card or paper stencils then just add one that's the right size and it's easier as I said before just to cut around the outside rather than the inside. And I'm looking to hear that I'm going all the way down to the paper on the bottom so I can hear a slight crinkle. Although it's just started chucking it down with rain so you might be able to hear that instead against the window pane. Right, when you've gone all the way around the outside, you should be able to very gently ease your template off. Now all this clay on top, that's all reusable peppermint clay, so that can go back into your stash of that colour. Now, as we've sandwiched together layers of coloured clay and scrap clay, it's nice to have a, a just a border and edge to go around the outside. So I'm going to take the leftover of my black clay and obviously choose whatever colour you want, um, but it's nice to have a colour that matches with some of the colours you've used in your design. And I'm going to roll this into a thinnish sausage, no wider, no wider than the height of my bowl, because we're then going to press it flat on the work surface that automatically makes it wider and I'm then going to put it through a thin setting of my pasta machine so for me I'm going to put it through setting number five obviously however thick you want your border to be that's the setting to use on your pasta machine but what we're looking for is a piece that's going to go the whole way around the bowl in one single piece so have a check see if it's long enough to fit round and it just about does. If the first time you do it it isn't long enough you can simply roll it up and put it um, do the same again but make sure it's slightly thinner this time when you press it down or of course you could put it back through at a thinner setting whichever is easier for you. I'm going to lay it flat on my work surface 
and as straight as I can because we're not very wide in a couple of places here, only just wider than the thickness of the bowl. But then taking our ruler and go as close to one edge as I can to be able to get a straight line all the way down but not take off too much of the thickness of our clay and keep your fingers well out of place. And you pull the excess away, lift that up, lift your clay piece up, move it further along the board. It's long enough that your ruler didn't fit the whole way down, which mine obviously didn't. Put your ruler back in place to match up with the cut line of the other side. If you overlap at all, just cut away. All you need is a straight line on one edge and that'll be fine. And then we will chop off one end straight. And then we're going to lay this around the side of our bowl so that that flat bottom is completely level with the wax paper at the bottom of our bowl. You don't want any of that blue colour showing through. You want this black completely level at the bottom. So take your time and just slowly work your way around. Cut off when it meets. Then either with the back of your fingernail, go around to make sure the clay is pressed in, and or with the side of your cable needle, just really make sure that clay is pressed nicely in against the side and goes all the way down to the bottom of your piece. As I say, you shouldn't be seeing any the coloured clay underneath it should be level with the wax paper. Then just half fold any of the clay that sits over the top of the bowl. The reason we do that is we want it to press on the very top edge of our bowl. We're about to cut the excess off so we want to make sure that the top is nicely lined up and then with your tissue blade nice and flat against the surface and if you've got a piece like me where yours is nearly level anyway bring the blade to this sort of nearly level piece and we are just going to very gently move round so I'm keeping my blade in place I'm moving the paper and the slab just pull it round every so often you might need to do a little sawing motion but you should be able to get most of it just by turning the slab around. And a final thing, I will generally just go just slightly angling over the edge to make sure that that border is completely adhered to the outer blue layer of clay. And that is it, that is our bowl slab ready to add to our bowl form. I will give one final check over to make sure everything's all neat and smooth and blended because this side is going face down onto the bowl so once I've added it to the bowl I won't be able to see it anymore. So one final check before we remove it from the paper. So I have my bowl form which I've made sure is nice and clean on the surface that I'm going to put it on and then make sure that your hands are also completely clean and then very carefully pull the wax paper off the underside of your slab. I normally put my thumb right on the very centre and aim for the centre of the bowl. So on this one for instance because I've got the white pattern on the middle if I aim the white pattern towards the centre of that that gives me a bit of a head start and a hope that I've got it evenly placed and the thing to do is to pull the sides down just a couple and see whether or not the gap from this side to the bottom base of the bowl is similar. Turn it a quarter and pull those sides down. Now I can see from this that this side, if take my hand out the way, this side there's more than this side so the bowl slab is a little bit too far that way so I will simply put it down very very gently pick it up move it just a fraction the other way 
and that's now our better match. And then just carry on doing that around the side, make sure that I haven't changed the pattern from there. And just work your way, just keep testing whether it's all roughly the same around the outside. The other way of seeing whether it's the same is to find a little off cut of wax paper, which is clean. Put that on the bottom and holding the clay up at the sides, press your bowl flat onto your tile. And you can then see how central or not your piece is. Now, although my little mark saying my initials wasn't that central, if you look at the amount of blue clay I've got around the outside, that's not bad. So I know that's probably about as central as I'm likely to get it. So I can now start working my mud butt around my bowl. And what I'll do, again, making sure your hands are really nice and clean, very, very gently. So I'm, although I'm touching the clay, I'm hardly pressing down, but I'm pressing always towards the outside. The idea being, I'm trying to make sure I have absolutely no trapped air under this slab on the inside of the bowl. I will generally, where I've got a pattern on the outside, so I can see sort of certain points of my bowl. So for instance, this one, I've got my six points. I will normally work the points sort of down and then work round and do the next two. And I don't worry about leaving the bulging gaps in between. Because once I've got those places nicely pressed down, I can very, very gently work round with my fingers, say hardly really pressing and just persuading the clay that it wants to come down. When it's nearly there, you can turn it up and almost roll your finger round and do that going the whole way around the bowl. And by doing those six pieces first, I'm not going to have this side nice and flat and end up with huge bulging sides on this side. I will also look at the point at which we added this border because we didn't get to press this in on the underneath side of the clay because the wax paper was there. So although it distorts slightly the round shape, as you can see here it's gone slightly wavy, I would still rather do that to have the border nicely adhered to the blue clay than to leave it with the possibility that it will gap. And then once I've done that I will look at the top side because quite often when we've pressed this round we've been pressing this side wider so whereas the inside's been pressing smaller so there's unlikely to be any gapping between seams you might well find that where you we've added all these borders and the clay slices areas have just gapped slightly in which case just go over with your needle to make sure it's all nicely joined and then i will finally making sure my roller is very nice and clean go over the whole piece, in particular those edges that I've just rolled with my cable needle and make sure the whole piece is nice and flat. I'll go over the base to make sure I've got a nice flat base and I'll stay around all the edges. If when you're rolling over any bubbles start to appear, just simply get a needle pop it in several times to let the air escape um, and then press from the outside towards it to make sure that any air is pushed up and then you won't get any bubbles happening in the oven. I'm just going to take that little sheet of off-cut wax paper again and just press down nice and firmly to give myself a nice flat base again and our piece is ready to bake. So I will bake mine on a tile, I will tent the whole piece in aluminium foil I'll make sure it's a, a brand new sheet of foil so there's no creases in it and I'll also make sure it's tented quite a long way higher than the bowl so it's not touching the clay at any stage so you're not going to get divots from where the foil has creased and gone into the clay. Because we've got quite a thick slab I will generally bake my bowls for longer than the recommended time so about an hour each time when I bake something like this but the temperature bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using. And I'll bring you back when we've got this one baked. Here's the finished bowl. It's out of the oven. 
finished baking and I have sanded and polished this one to get a nice shine. Now, obviously you don't need to do that if you don't want to, but I, I like to get that because it gives this lovely sort of stone feel, sort of finish to the um, polymer clay. When you're doing sanding, I work with wet, dry sandpaper and I work from 240 grit to 600, 1000, 1500 and 2000 grit. I always protect my hands by wearing something like a pair of rubber gloves or something similar if you can't wear rubber gloves. I put a little bit of um, detergent in with the water. When you've finished, either sand in a bowl so you can strain the water through a piece of um, very fine cotton cloth or if you're in a, using a sink, I use, I will use a wet wipe and I'll put it, as you can see there, in the bottom of the sink so it collects things and then you'll find the rest of it sort of collects around the side of the basin. Um, as you can see, there is quite a lot of stuff that um, comes out when you sand, even a small bowl like this. And if you're doing one of the larger bowls, it's a huge amount. So please don't let it go into the water system. Collect it, um, say strain it through something, and then you can dispose of this in your normal household waste. As always, I give you another colour option. So here's another way of doing it. And we've got the colours on the back there. So for this one, for the two blends, I used got the red blend here, so that was sunflower yellow, orange and red. And for the green one we've got apple green, tropical green and emerald green. And then just black done in the same way as we did before. For the border I've got um, slightly darker reds. So I'm using the cherry red um, between black and then we've got the emerald green on the outside. And then for the underneath I did the Indian red, same border obviously. Border on exactly the same as we did with this one. And then the emerald green on the outside. And with this one just in case you don't have a buffing wheel or a big sort of machine um, and like to get a high shine. The shine on this is pretty similar to the shine on the blue one. This one I did sand in exactly the same way, but I then used Renaissance wax. So once I'd finished sanding and let the bowl dry completely, I added a little bit of the wax on a soft um, cloth, rubbed it in um, so I've got a nice thin layer, let it dry for at least half an hour or so, and then just rub smooth and just rub briskly over the whole thing with a soft polishing cloth and you get say, a really nice shine on that as well. You can of course put the Renaissance wax on without sanding it but you won't get the high shine because obviously the high shine comes from the fact this surface is lovely and smooth but if you just want to get a, a, a nice sheen on it then use a Renaissance wax in the same way and that will save you sanding. And of course you can just leave it completely as it is when it comes out of the oven. It's completely up to you how do you finish them off, but I think they just make very nice sweet little bowls. Having done the smaller bowls, you can move on to larger ones. And for those of you who have the Etsy tutorial, these are some of the bowls that I'm going to show you in the next couple of minutes that I said I would mention at the end of that tutorial. So this one's very similar to the um, small bowl we've just done. Then you can build on that, so I've still got the hexagon patterns here, but I'll show you how to do sort of multiple borders and multiple layers and build things up, such as ones like that. We can move on to the square bowls, which is a slightly different technique, with different patterns underneath. And in this one, this is the one that I um, have made using the mould that I show you how to make from cardboard in the tutorial, as is this one, also using that same square mould. You see here I've got sort of slightly more fluted sides on this one. And another square one. It's just much easier to see them in a video than it is in still photos on the tutorial. Here's the round one using hexagon in the middle. Showing you how to do the nice round border, and this one's the one with legs on. And again, this one's got a, an extra triple layer cane. And obviously, I'm using all the Skinner blends in here, so I show you how to do those, as you know, in the tutorial. And then, of course, we've got the handkerchief-shaped bowl, which is a square bowl. And this one's got a circle in the middle with a square border. And again, I show you how to do those and how to do these little inserts. And on the back, we've got the square with the different colours. So that's it, that's the end of the tutorial. So whether you're doing just a simple bowl or whether you've got the Etsy one and you've seen now all the other bowls you can make with that one, I hope you've enjoyed it and just seen how much fun you can have making bowls completely from polymer clay. 
As always, there are links to everything you need in the video description below, and I can't wait to start seeing photos of all the bowls that you produce. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that one, and a special thank you to those of you who subscribe. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to go and start experimenting with different shaped bowls using some of the different shaped stencils. Once you start, it's so much fun you don't want to stop. Bye for now. Bye.